Yeah. I'm Chang. Today I'm um, taking us to a small town in India where I used to volunteer for an NGO project about late February and March this year. <laughs> As I said in the first video, through this series, I would like to introduce you to some meaningful projects and careful, how you to careful. meet some people who are doing cool things out there about forest and climate actions and listen to what they have to share. So today we're going to have some special guests. Let's keep watching to see who they are. So we have been talking about growing and protecting forests to fight climate change. But how about food? While we have a limited land on this planet, we need them to grow forest to sequester carbon dioxide. On the other hand, we also need agriculture to feed about 9 billion people in the year 2050. Is there a way that we can achieve both? Agroforestry is a combination of agriculture and forestry. Besides agriculture crops or pasture land, we plant woody perennials such as trees, shrubs, palms, bamboos, etc. on the same area. Agroforestry is not a new practice, but it's becoming one of the climate smart agricultural practices, which helps to not only adapt, but also mitigate climate change. Trees can help farmers adapt to climate change by providing shade and cool environment to sensitive crops and animals by filtering and capturing water resources by forming microclimate with a greater biodiversity of insects and animals. On the other hand, the rate of carbon sequestration under an agroforestry system is proved to be higher than those from monocrops. To give you an example about agroforestry in a specific context, let's follow me to Mananapali, a small town in South India, and visit the project Torana. Many farmers in Mananapali and Andhra Pradesh state suffer from heavy dependence on hybrid seeds and chemicals and an unstable market. They are vulnerable to climate change, failed monsoons, shortage of rainwater, and most farmers grow monocrops, especially tomatoes, which can easily expose them to low prices and crop loss. The Project Telegram is setting up a demonstration farm for organic agroforestry. By using diverse native tree species, combined with multi-purpose crop designs, Toranam is engaging farmers with sustainable agriculture practices which can help them adapt to climate change. Our two special guests today will be Francisca, the project manager of Toranam, and Klim, an Indian uh, mother student who has been involved in the project for nine months to share with us about some insights and also their opinion about the role of young people. Hi, I'm Francisca and I founded Toranam Project um, a couple of years ago together with Monia and Prasad. And now I'm managing the project in India and also from Germany. My motivation starting this project it was actually a little bit of a coincidence. So um, I started as a, as a university project. Um, but now I just like doing it a lot. And I think um, the situation here with the, the small scale farmers committing suicide um, being so much under pressure from various um, things like climate change, the pressure of like these big agrochemical companies. So now we have uh, different types of um, agroforestry models here. So one is um, trees on agricultural land and we have a variety of fruit and nitrogen fixing trees on a millet based crop rotation. 
and then we also have a home garden system with a lot of fruit trees and um, a lot of vegetables and we have um, another agroforestry system that is mainly it's a very dense system mainly to improve the soil quality first and we're also using the um, whatever we can cut from the trees as fodder for our cows. So we have four um, agroforestry plots and in total we have planted more than 500 trees on our land and on participating farmers land. And we're already like only two years after like starting the whole project, we're already seeing like a lot of improvement in for example like the soil quality. But the farmers around there in general they're very interested in agroforestry and what we're doing here and they are also very curious about learning new they want to learn new technologies but actually agroforestry is not very new it's a very old concept but not that much known anymore to the farmers around so yes the farmers are very excited about it and we already have um, a waiting list with about 20 to 30 farmers that actively want to get involved in the project So the main concern for the farmers is the money. So they are not worried about like the environment or climate change that much. Um, as long as they they think they can make money, they are ready to do whatever it takes. And um, so this is something we have to work with. So if we go to the farmer and we tell them, listen, climate change is there, maybe you should plant some trees. or um, Oh, what you're doing is not good for the environment. Maybe you should change it. The farmer will, they will just laugh at us. So we need to make sure that we're improving the farmer's situation as well as um, protecting the environment. And this is exactly what happens with um, organic agroforestry systems. Our approach is to get the farmers to transition like bit by bit, not they, they don't have to start agroforestry on their land, on their whole land um, at the start. If they are ready to try it out on a small piece of land, they will realize it, how it works, that it works, and then they will slowly, slowly um, change completely. The next steps are to have more um, model plots on the farm. We still have like three or four plots um, that we're not using right now, so we're ha we have the potential and the land to plant a lot more trees, to do a lot more agroforestry, and then also we want to actively involve a lot more farmers and plant a lot more trees. It, num in numbers, maybe within the next year, um, 20 more farmers um, would be like, to, depending on their size of land, 2,000 to 5,000 um, trees, and then. I think the project will start like taking off and we can plant even more trees every year. Hello, uh, I'm Klim. Uh, I'm, uh, I've done my master's in sustainable development practices and uh, I've been involved in this project for nine months. So uh, first and foremost, what the youth has to do is they are educated and they are more well informed, more knowledgeable. So what they can first and foremost do is uh, disseminate information to the older generation, the older farmers who have been pra practicing more uh, uh, traditionalistic approach towards uh, cultivation and how those bad practices can be either improved or discarded. And uh, apart from that they can be more innovative which uh, the older generation uh, might not possibly know about it. And, uh, do you, and do you think there's potential for the young people to also come back to the land and, yeah, sure. and kind of take over some of those roles? Yeah, so the, what, what part of uh, India is, uh, where we are at, is called Rail Seema, and this is known as a uh, semi-arid area. So a lot of people move uh, to other towns, districts in search for jobs, mainly based on agriculture, for example, chili cultivation or groundnut or tomato even. So what uh, they can do is um, you know, bring, bring forth 
uh, other people who are there in the urban areas come back to their farm uh, or the small piece of land and do something in it with that. Thank you, David, for helping me to conduct the interview. And if you guys want to know more about Torana, you can go on our website. I hope you have enjoyed my video today, and until next time.